let's now go into the uh, first part of the session number one. In this first part of the session, we will be introducing some of the basic concepts related to entrepreneurial finance. First of all, we are entering a territory that for some of you, maybe it's new, for some of you, it's uh, something that you already have seen before. So we are talking about accounting. Accounting is a language that is usually used in the business context. Basically, what accounting does, it tries to record all transactions that happen in the business activity in a way that then they can be stored, or let's say collected, analyzed, and synthesized. And we use accounting as this language that allows us to make sense of what happens and record what happens in an organization. We have an issue though. Accountants are usually not trained to understand entrepreneurs. And most of the entrepreneurs don't know or don't like or don't enjoy doing accounting. So both sides are not that happy, let's say, to meet. In addition, most accountants are prepared to work in large firms, either as offering services to other companies, accounting services, bookkeeping, financial management, or they work for a large organization in the finance department as an accountant. So when it comes to small projects with a dynamic reality, changing situations, with an entrepreneur that uh, tries to make quick decisions and follow its own intuition, those type of things usually don't get together that well. It's even more difficult when it comes to the accountant has to deal to put value into things that are difficult to value, that are maybe they don't have a market for them, uh, as it might happen with a new idea or a potential new project or a potential business contact. It sometimes it becomes difficult for uh, the accountant to understand and work properly with the entrepreneur. So these concepts then need to find a way to work together and develop together. In addition, there is an aspect that is specifically important for entrepreneurs or even business owners, is that a lot of times an accountant might recommend to diversify risks or the financial perspective might be, you need to be exposed to different types of assets. You cannot put all your assets, all your time in only one project. But this might be actually what makes the project successful from the, let's say, strategy or business side. A lot of times we tell entrepreneurs, you need to fully focus on your project, stop doing whatever else you're doing, leave your other side job. Now it's the time to push this ahead. This means that the entrepreneur cannot diversify and is often overexposed to risk. There is though uh, something that helps to start uh, talking together, the project manager, the entrepreneur, and the finance person or the accountant is the financial statements. Financial statements aim to offer information about the condition, financial condition of a business, of a project. It, they offer critical information for outsiders. They are valuable to understand what's happening in the business, the oper operational effectiveness of the video, uh, sorry, of the business. They also help to make managerial decisions. So a lot of the times you need this type of information that you can find in the financial statements to make a decision, like sales are not growing. Maybe we should change. Oh, look, this product has much more profitability than, than this other one. Maybe we have to put an effort to increase sales. We should focus on those products that seem to have higher profitability. This type of discussions they require for financial statements. A lot of times they basically serve to back our story. So we are saying, oh, our company is doing very well. We are getting a lot of new clients. We are growing. But then we need the financial statement as a support to explain what we are doing and how much we are growing and how much uh, our new customers are being generating sales for us. In addition, if they are well generated and they are updated and they are, let's say, that you can trust them and that then you start to gain this element of legitimacy. So being good at running your financial statements, being careful, being uh, rigorous when you prepare them, it can give you an advantage. 
versus other companies or other people that might not be doing that or might not be able to do that. The second uh, element that we needed to cover is, okay, well, now we are more or less convinced about the need for financial statements, but then what is entrepreneurial finance and why is it different from other uh, types of finance uh, knowledge or concepts? So entrepreneurial finance means setting clear financial goals consistent with your aspirations as an entrepreneur or a project manager. It also means being able to use financial statements and report what happens with your business. Also, that you are able to forecast, try to prepare for the future. Also, that you are able to manage effectively your cash, that you are able to raise funds when you need them, and that if given the situation or given the time, you are able to exit the business, selling, liquidating, or any other situation that results in closing the business. Why is it different from traditional finance? Because, yes, yeah, some things are similar. We are also talking about financial markets, investments, financial management, and we need to be familiar with all of them. But some things are different. For example, that there is a lack of historical data on this new project or new company that you can use to justify and measure risk. And most of the time, again, that we cannot offer the simple solution or you need to diversify your risk, you need to invest in other projects, because probably that's the only project that the entrepreneur is pushing ahead developing. Just quick examples. How does an income statement look like? Those are coming from Vestas. And for example, you can look at the structure. Uh, it goes from the revenues to the net profit. So that's an income statement. Now you can see here an example of a balance sheet. Usually you would present the assets and the liabilities on two different sites here, they are put one on top of the other one. But basically you see that they are mentioning that there are some non-current assets, current assets. We will look into that. What do those things mean? And it's also important that as liabilities, there is an aspect that we will also be discussing in the coming sessions about, for example, why equity is a liability. Some things that also they highlight in this um, uh, balance sheet for example, information about the debt and the solvency ratio of the company. This is an example of a cash flow. And a cash flow statement basically offers you changes that have been happening and how much, for example, cash flow has been generated by operating activities or investing activities. And they also mention a concept that we will see that it's quite important, this idea of free cash flow. It's the idea that the ability of the company to generate cash that can be then invested or used for other things. In this case of Vestas, I added a few examples of other type of statements that you can generate. This is uh, more uh, a ratios, a key financial performance that they think they need to share with their investors. In this case, is the net debt to EBITDA and solvency ratio. Now it's time to just do a pause and give a quick look to this video.